Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I'm going to take you through some levels work on ES and Q and YM. First, a quick recap of kind of where we're at here. I'm zooming into the monthly, and this is the weekly chart, and we've got the daily chart here and the third panel with the volume profile on it. Um, as we talked about last week, the MACD uh, was looking to hook up a little bit and the weekly was getting flattish and now it's starting to roll over a little bit and that was the thought I had towards uh, consolidation we're also coming up to a resistant zone set up by the weekly highs and these three candles here and I think we're kind of butting up against that uh, going into next week you can see that the week pretty much didn't go anywhere if I look at the let's see this is Friday Wednesday the Monday so we opened here, went higher, came lower, and then we had a lower high and a lower low in a couple of days, right, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we came right back up again and more or less uh, closed near the near the highs of the week, but not quite at the highs. And nothing unusual in volume, neither really um, outstanding one way or the other on any of the particular days. Uh, we are still in a bullish pattern. Uh, we are hitting a resistance zone in this area and if I look at uh, that was ES if I look at NQ similar story uh, let's see NQ if I zoom into the monthly again it is higher high higher low on the monthly the weekly higher high higher low volume pretty decent uh, the other thing I'll point out in ES and YM on the weekly chart um, we did get a higher weekly volume and than the week before. Uh, and if you look at the week before that, we had uh, quite a bit higher volume. But the range of these candles is starting to get a little bit smaller with increasing volume. That's also a first sign for me that we may be in some small level of distribution where we've got uh, maybe a little bit more selling going on or let's say shorter term traders maybe taking some profit after I don't know what do we have like nine or ten weeks up in a row right one two three four five six seven eight nine tenth week up in a row um, you don't really see that too often I don't, I don't know how far back we'd have to go to find that but I'd be willing to bet it's quite a bit farther back um, that we have to go on the NQ side, on the monthly profile, value area high is up here at 73.33, and we're just past the yearly volume point of control uh, as designated by this red line here. On the chart, I also have the cloud now I've added, and this yellow line is the 34 exponential moving average from which the cloud range of the cloud is uh, somewhat derived. And as I talked about in the opening video we had uh, last week, this yellow line is in fact the 34 EMA normalized to zero on the horizontal time axis. And this uh, plot here are closes away from that 34 EMA. And it plots green when the close is above the tie of the cloud. It plots red when it's below the cloud low and it plots cyan when the close is within the cloud. So that's kind of the logic of this indicator. Um, it's still something I'm working on and thinking about um, looking for price extremes away from the 34 EMA is another sign of exhaustion. I will point out NQ has got negative divergence as does ES on the daily MACD. So we have uh, a falling uh, while price is making higher highs the MACD itself is making lower highs and that is a negative divergence scenario so we're making higher highs in price lower highs it's also another sign of exhaustion we have RSI coming up here on the highs uh, in the so-called overbought zone as we know things can stay overbought for a very long time but it is you know an indication of uh, closes uh, you know more average closes on the high side than the low side uh, as indicated by uh, how the RSI works uh, I have also changed my RSI time period I've got a 10 period look back here which is two weeks uh, 10 trading days on the weekly I've got 13 weeks which is a quarter and on the monthly I've got 12 months which is a year so my look back here is a year 
uh, on a rolling RSI uh, calculation. This one is a quarter, and this one is 10 days or two trading weeks. Okay, and the last one I'm going to look at is YM. And then I'll go back and, and talk a little bit about the levels and, and kind of some things about the levels here going forward. Uh, YM is a little bit stronger. The MACD is closed higher. Now the three period monthly moving average is over the 10 period monthly moving average. Uh, pretty strong. The close, uh, the high of YM actually eclipsed uh, at least uh, two of these high candles that were sell off candles and it didn't quite reach this one. Obviously, these are resistant zones because we've got selling wicks above. Not, you know, this one is not dramatic because we closed in the high, but uh, these two clearly had some liquidation breaks where we pulled off uh, from those highs quite dramatically. And you'll note that the weekly here is a doji, right? So I've got a weekly doji showing up. Uh, this MACD is flattening out, maybe rolling over. We may get chop consolidation in YM. You know, in this trading range, uh, you know, it's not quite clear what we're going to do yet, of course. Um, but YM is starting to show it, it went the furthest, and it is starting to show some weakest uh, weakness the soonest at this point, uh, showing some some rolling over here. The negative divergence on the daily isn't quite as uh, pronounced as on ES and NQ. But it is there, right? So we have a flat, more or less, MACD, and yet we're making significantly higher prices over time. So that is a signal of uh, negative divergence. Overbought on the RSI uh, as well. So one thing I want to go back to on the ES and show you, I'm going to do this live. Uh, so hopefully we'll, this will turn out to be an interesting exercise that you can play on your own. Um, I'm looking at the daily chart of ES, and really what I want to do here is get a sense for if we're going to be pulling back, potentially, at any time soon, if I make an assumption that this was a local high for the pullback, and this was the low, right, from this move upwards, what might a pullback be looking like? So I'm going to just use my uh, Fibonacci tool to give me some idea of what a pullback might look like. And you can see, I'm just going to erase a couple lines. You hold the control key down, click the line, and it will erase it. And I've got a 1272 extension. I've got the 1618 extension if we're going to you know, do a major move down. But if we're going to do just a pullback on an uptrend, I'm looking for a 38.2, a 50, or a 61.8 kind of re retracement back into these zones, right? So this is an interesting area for me to look at as a potential pullback zone somewhere out in time. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to look at a symmetry move, which means if I look at uh, this period from a high to a low and this period from a high to a low, these were you know pretty decent pullbacks. And if I look at the uh, symmetry pullback of the same kind of price length, I'm going to use my uh, symmetry Fibonacci tool and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. And I'm going to say I'm going to take that high to this low. That's the symmetry low. And then I'm going to project that same price swing from this high, which was our local high. And then I'm going to erase a few lines here. So I'm going to erase the 90% and I'm going to erase this one. So you can see I have a couple of nested uh, Fibonacci levels here, right? So this, this one on the outside was the major swing, and this one on the inside was the symmetry projection. And notice something interesting. This swing high to low, 100% swing range, shows up right at the 38.2% retracement of the major swing. That's an interesting uh, something that I just would will think of as an interesting move. You know, this is the 38.2 and the 61.8 retracement, but a 100% retracement comes up and it falls right on the 38.2 of the major swing. So, you know, some would look at that and say, you know, that's an interesting little cluster area where we have a 100% symmetry swing of a pullback that happened in this zone here, right, this high to this low. I looked at the number of points, 100% swing is the swing from that high to that low. And you project that from the high over here, 
this swing high if you project that all the way down if we're in a pull going to get a pullback uh, it falls on a 38.2 retracement of the major swing which was this this low to this high right interesting so here's another thing that that I want to do I want to get an idea if this is a typical amount of time for that swing to occur how about if I take the projection of time Fibonacci, which is this tool down here, Fibonacci time extension, and I look at this date to this date, and then I project that forward from this swing high. And, and then I clicked it, I moved it in there, and this shows me if this swing, this swing down happen at the same price length, this is the same number of days that it would take to get there. So this is a projection in time of where that 38.2 uh, retracement from the major swing and 100% retracement of the um, major swing, or the 100% retracement of the minor swing might happen. And I'm going to get a little zone in here. This is the 100% time, the same time that it took for this swing high to swing low is the distance between this and this 100% line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a little circle uh, with a drawing tool and I'm going to look at, you know, I'm just going to basically put an area of interest here and kind of watch this over time. Now it could be a little bit longer of a swing, right? We could set, get some called consolidation in for a week or two. If we end up with another higher high, I might want to take this projection uh, and you know run the fib just like I did through here from that high to from that low to that new high and move the time out and whatnot. But I really just wanted to give you an idea of something that I'm looking at and an idea of taking a swing high to a swing low and looking at where a time projection might be. Now let's say, for example, this, um, you know, the movement down didn't occur here. Let's say it occurred here. Where might the time be? I'm going to activate this drawing, and then I'm going to take this 0% time, and I'm going to move it over to this candle. And right click. And it would suggest the time for this same move to happen might occur in this area, right? So I still get my drawing tool, and I'm looking at, yeah, maybe maybe the, the, the move down starts happening after this candle and in time I'm going to see this time projection out here. So I'm getting sort of a time zone between the 11th of March and the 15th of March and this zone is uh, all the way down at 2620. It's a pretty significant pullback uh, you know looking at that area. Now I know that March 15th is also a monthly expiration so another thing that I'm going to do and get an idea of is what the uh, options interest, uh, open interest is in the SPX, which is the uh, same as, it's similar to the EX, ES, right? It's the um, S&P 500 uh, daily index on regular time hours. And what I'm going to look at is the open interest, because I know there's a lot of options traded in SPX. And I want to look at where there are clusters of a large volume of open interest in this trading vehicle and get a sense for is a pullback uh, potential. It's waiting for data here. I don't know why it's taking so long. Um, oh boy. Let me just pause the video until the data shows up. Hold on one second. Okay, we're back. I don't know why that took so long to populate. It's a Sunday, but uh, now if I look at the SPX options, we closed at 2803.69 in the regular time trading hours in the S&P 500 uh, index. And you can see uh, there's a fair amount of open interest in the March 15th uh, expiration, right? So we're looking out roughly two weeks or so. And I'm going to start looking back in time so there's a fair amount of uh, options, int uh, open interest here, right? This open interest number of 30,000, this one's 48,000. But you'll notice down here at 2750, there's a big chunk 
67,000 and 65,000. Well, that's interesting. And down to 2,700, I've got 62,000 and 56,000. Now we want to see what's, what the open interest is uh, on Monday because these numbers haven't been updated with the change uh, that's occurred on Friday. But even if all of these contracts were closed, we still have a large amount of open interest at 2700 and uh, 2750 and 2700. And if I look below that, um, at 2600, we've got 95,000 here and 59,000 here. So 2650 has 59,000 here and 84,000 here. Just some very interesting large amounts of open interest at the uh, the you know the the round number 2600 2650 uh, ranges there's a lot of open interest below us and if I look above us uh, there's 3,000 there's you know some here not quite as large and then really between 2900 we've got 32,000 and 15,000 I would say that there's not as much above us as there is below us. And sometimes these monthly expiration open interest figures can get a fair amount of activity pulling towards them. So again, for me, it's another interesting um, look at the options activity and where uh, large clusters of open interest lie and further solidifies uh, my point of view that we may in fact get some selling activity or, or pullback activity and you know for me where would I be looking for potential areas to pull back to well they're going to be in this you know March 15th time area and probably in the 2750 2700 would be a 61.8 percent retracement and if we get a really extreme liquidation break in that quick quick of a time we might even look down in the 2600 range where we saw a lot of open interest uh, I'm personally a little bit skeptical it will pull back that far that fast, but you know certainly history shows that, that we have had some extremes and high volatility areas where that's happened. I will point out here that these swings, if you project them, are much smaller, and my and my belief is that they're probably going to be more like uh, you know that 2750, 2700 range, and it's an exercise you can do for yourself and look at for where clusters on these symmetry pullbacks. Uh, over time, you know, what the equivalent amount of time is projected forward from those might be, uh, given that I've shown you how to use some of the tools for Fibonacci uh, time pullbacks and um, price pullbacks. Okay. So all of that being said, I'm going to move into my levels discussion, and I've got my levels for March the 2nd. Again, these are price support resistant zones that I'm using on lower time frame charts. Uh, if you're day trading on, let's say, a five-minute, uh, um, 90 days, let's try 30 days on the time frame, 30-day, five-minute chart, um, you know, I've had to go back 180 days now to find some levels because we're at, you know, highs in the last 30 to 60 days, so I've had to go way back in time uh, to find some levels on high-volume nodes and low-volume nodes, so... Those are some things to think about here going forward. I don't know how strong they're going to be, but we'll see. This gray box is a resistance zone set up by the candles that I showed earlier um, on the daily chart on where some highs were. So if I look at the daily chart and look at this triple, triple top that we had in this area and zoom out a little bit, I've drawn the box from the high of this candle to the high of this candle, right? So this box is between this high and this high, and it's what I think is a potential resistance zone uh, for price to find some resistance on ES going forward. Let's go back to my 30-day, 5-minute. Uh, let's see, 30-day, not 1-minute. Let's try 5-minute. All right. So, um, the blue boxes were regular time hour gap, so this is a, would if I turned off the extended time trading hours, you're going to see a gap in price from the close of this day 
to the open of this day, and that's this gap. We didn't quite close it here. We came within, I think, 50 cents of closing it, but I only take the box off when the, the gap itself is actually closed. So we've still got one below us. we got one above us. I'm trying to do a uh, some of the nomenclature or standards here that I'm going to try to start following going forward. The solid lines are one-year time frame volume profile levels. The dashed lines are in 30-day volume profiles and these short dash lines are either 90 or 180 day high or low volume nodes uh, drawn from those profiles. So that's kind of the uh, um, activity that I'm looking at here. I've also added uh, where these are static levels, right? These are static levels coming from the volume profile itself and where price has found support or resistance. There's a dynamic level I've added in here, which is a volume weighted average price. It's a free indicator in TOSC called VWAP, V-W-A-P, right? It's up here. VWAP is the indicator, and I've got uh, plus and minus three standard deviations, and I've colored them gray. So those would be really extreme price movements in one day uh, if they would hit either one of these levels. But you'll find sometimes this VWAP line ends up as a dynamic support and resistance line. So we find during the day time price will come up, hit it, fall back from it, hit it, fall back, and then get through, you know, so we've got static levels and a dynamic level here in VWAP uh, for trading some of these futures during the day time frame. And you can still see these levels, they seem to work pretty well. We do have, you know, this is the 30 minute time frame low volume node uh, in the blue line. We did find support here, um, you know, came back. Uh, we didn't really find much in this high volume node. We went through it. Uh, we went through this one, we came back and tested it, came out of it, and so on. So you can get a look for yourself when you put these levels on your chart, um, how well they work. And uh, that's the levels for um, ES. I'm going to show the levels for NQ. Gap zone below us here. Oh, I didn't point it out on the uh, ES chart, but I've also put in the expected move, right? So the expected move comes from looking at the options uh, volatility and the options expiration one week out. And this, uh, these lines here, oh, they should, one's 91.50 and one's 91.25. They should be the same, but uh, within one tick is close enough for me at this point. I'm not going to go through and change it. Um, but they set where the end of the week expiration of the uh, futures contract most likely will lie within one standard deviation it will lie within these lines it does not mean that it, we won't exceed it of course anything can happen in price and in, during the week it is not uncommon to find our way outside this zone really what this zone indicates is by the end of the week where price most likely is going to close within standard deviation one standard deviation so it just gives you an idea of where the extremes are for price movement and it's expected roughly about a $91.50 move in the NQ contract for the week. Uh, VWAP is also pl plotted here. You can see, again, uh, price will tend to come up and hit it, stick it, whatnot. Um, I do have, uh, on the futures chart, I will show that I do have adjust for contract changes checked, as well as showing the extended hours trading check. And you get a sense for how these lines uh, have worked, right? So that, you know, came down, found support at this low volume node, came up, found resistance at this low volume node, came down, chopped in price around the high volume nodes, right? So high volume nodes is where a lot of uh, activity is chopping around that price. And the low volume nodes typically are pivot points or reversals uh, where they occur uh, in short term trading. And what I'm looking at at short term trading anyway. So you can use them as targets uh, or potential entry zones for price activity in your day trading as you're doing your day trading. Okay, so that was NQ, and this is YM. And I'll turn the levels on for YM. And again, you see the same kind of thing, right? So prices come up, hit the level, come back, high volume node, chopped around. This is the one year high volume node chopping around in there came down chopped a little bit here 
you know, we went through this line, we came back, tested it, came back down, we hit this high volume node, chopped, came back, and you, you can see that these um, you know, static levels do tend to have some reaction near them. Either they support price or price goes through, comes back and tests them and whatnot. So they tend to be, um, you know, fairly common places to look at targets for taking profits or finding places where uh, moves could be exhausted and you find, you know, uh, good quality entries with uh, low stop loss for reversals, right? So you know, stocking this trade, picking a short at this high, and then waiting, you know, uh, with a relatively short stop loss, that was a pretty healthy trade, um, you know, down into this 25902 area. Anyway, so that's uh, some ideas in the levels. Um, I do have the levels in a text file. I am not so sure um, how Paul is going to share that, but uh, there is a video on how to import these links into your charts and save them if you want to have the levels on your charts uh, for your day trading activity or you know maybe longer term trading 30 minute 60 minute uh, chart time frames and whatnot um, you know looking at uh, some of your trading activity in the future hope that helps guys take care and have a good trading week take care bye